there's really four types of wealth in the world. Okay. There's financial wealth, there's physical wealth, there's social wealth, and there's time wealth. Don't get me wrong. Social wealth is extremely important. So is financial wealth. And so is uh, physical wealth. You know, you can't rebuy your body. You got to take care of and respect your body. Financial wealth will help you get more time wealth and social wealth. Some of those are going to be genuine. Some of them aren't. That's just the reality of, of, of having a social network of people. Some friends are going to be true core people that you know are great friends. Some are going to be acquaintance. Some people are going to stab you in the back. That sucks, but that's part of having social wealth. And we need that as human beings. Human beings do not operate alone in a house. We need to talk and interact with other human beings. It enriches us. It enriches our perspective. It makes us laugh. It makes us cry. It makes us angry. It makes us happy. But throughout all of those wealths, the most important wealth you can have is time wealth. And how do you get time wealth in a capitalistic structure? Financial wealth. You need financial wealth. Well, let me rephrase that. You could have immediate time wealth, but the idea of living under a bridge and panhandling for money, that doesn't sound as doesn't comfortable sound as appealing, I, yeah. <laughs> it does not sound appealing. So technically, could you? Yes. But because of this system we operate in, you really need to focus on that financial wealth to get that time wealth. And that's what I'm tying back into your automating system processes with the, with the Tim Ferriss four-hour workweek book. That's a high, you need to be automating these things, automate your investments, automate, commit to automating and purchasing a piece of real estate every five years. And by doing these things, you're creating the large financial wealth, which gets you the creme de la creme of life, which is time wealth. Man, I'm glad that this is something that we, that we got into, because I know when we talked about what we had mentioned in the episode this had never even come across my mind, but now that it's coming up, I think this is really great because this, from what you probably know, this is something that not a lot of people talk about or even think is possible, but there are plenty of people out there doing stuff like what you're doing. Correct. And what Tim Ferriss is talking about. Yep. And I'm just on a platform letting people know, like, look, would I love to be as successful as Tim Ferriss? Sure. But is it, does it matter at this point in my life because I have enough passive income coming in? No. I'm doing this stuff because I love it. And if I can help change one, two, three, five, a thousand, a million lives, I don't care what that number is anymore for me anymore. I just want to help people understand they can design a life worth living and designing it the way they want to. If they just take the time to start absorbing some of my content and applying themselves to this stuff. And one great thing about it too, is that a lot of the stuff people will want to add to their lifestyle it's really not as expensive as they think it is. And so, you know, someone might, you know, scoff at somebody, you know, making, let's say 80 K a year, just completely passive. Like that's not enough money. But the thing about it is, uh, you know, to travel and everything like that, to be able to eat at nice restaurants, to go do different events, you don't need to be a millionaire to do that type of stuff. And so to have these systems, like what you're talking about, it can provide more than adequate income to live the type of lifestyle that people aspire for that you see like the people on Instagram living and you don't need all that money to be able to do it unless you want to have the materialistic stuff too, like the cars and, and the house and all that. But as far as the lifestyle, it's really not that expensive. And that's another thing too. You know, I've been talking a lot and focusing on, I'm not this monk. Like I drive a nice car. I drive a nice Mercedes. You know, I like, you know, nice fast cars and You know, I live in a good house in a decent area, but I don't need a $150,000 car and I don't need a million dollar house because if I need those things, I need to stay in this capitalistic system and keep working longer. And so really just scaling back on that and understanding you have more than enough of what you need. um, Just really just, and then the other thing too, before I lose this thought, you mentioned something to the effect of Instagram and what people are doing on there. I think that's a very toxic thing that you need to learn to um, stop tapping the vein on so much because Instagram's a highlight reel. When Jennifer posts a beautiful picture while she's in some amazing Bay Area in Spain, you don't Mm -hmm. see the fact that Jennifer's struggling with her relationship with her boyfriend who's cheating on her and she doesn't have a good relationship with her father and she's, you know, up and down crying every other weekend. You don't see that. All you see are the good things, the absolutely amazing things that are happening in people's lives. And that's just not reality. 
And so you need to understand that when you look at Instagram that like, okay, these are very brief experiences or points in time where people are having a good time. This isn't their life 24 seven, because I think people will look at that without that frame of reference and feel defeated or feel like they need to, they don't, they don't feel good about their life or alternatively like me, they're like, I need to go pursue more money. I need to go do more because I need to be able to do this stuff nonstop 24 seven. And that's just not a healthy mentality to have when it comes to social media. That's a great point, actually. And this is something that I had read about in a book called Digital Minimalization by, mm. I think it was by Cal Newport. What's this one called? I'm actually going to write this down. This sounds interesting. I think it was Digital Minimalization. Okay. I would look it up right now, but I don't want like no, you're typing fine. You're and fine. all that to pop up on the audio. <laughs> no, you're good. You're good. I wrote it down. Uh, I'll figure it out. Yeah, I know it is a Cal Newport book. So if that's not the exact title, I'm sure you can find it just from typing in Digital Cal Newport. Okay. Sounds good. um, It talks about that same thing that you were just mentioning about it being a highlight reel for people pretty much. And someone that's spending a lot of their free time on that and constantly making these comparisons. Meanwhile, they're working their their day job. I'm sure it would make them feel like crap if they're seeing these people that they went to school with or, or know posting these pictures from these different trips and, you know, showing all the highlights. They're thinking it's their full life. Like they're thinking that's how it is every day. Yep. It's just a completely unrealistic way to live your life. And again, stop comparing yourself to other people. When you start doing that, like you'd be amazed at how happy you can just wake up and be every day. Does that mean I'm happy every day? No. I, do I yearn for some things? Do Sometimes do I look at a car and I'm like, damn, that'd be cool to have. Yeah, sure. But my alternative is diving back into this soul crushing corporate structure stuff that I just don't want to do anymore. You know, and it's like, I'd rather have a $50,000 car. I'd rather have a $10,000 car and putz around in that and have my time freedom, my time wealth. So that way I can tinker around and do other things. And generally speaking, if you find people really pursuing their passions for one, two, three, four, five years, and they're not expecting money to come from it, guess what magically just tails behind it? Money. <laughs> 